Today I'm going to show you guys how we do the slow shutter effect. Really nice little technique that you guys can add into your videos just to add a little bit of extra style. We're going to go through the settings you need, how I like to do it, when and where, and a couple of the different little techniques that I do to get the best look out of this technique. By making your shutter speed much slower, you're making your sensor slower to take in the information, creating all of that blur and that kind of like movement in your frame. If you do this right, you can get it that your subject doesn't have too much of that motion blur and the background is all like blurry and cool. Something I like to do for this style of the demonstration is to have a reasonably wide lens. You can do this handheld or you can do it on a gimbal. I'm gonna show you guys how to do both, but we're gonna start off one on a gimbal. So by having the shutter speed at something like one over 15, we're also gonna to have to compensate with our other settings to create the correct amount of exposure. I have a variable ND on front, which is gonna help. And you can see here that we get this kind of like crazy effect where everything rushes past on the sensor just because it's taking in so much less information or it's taking a lot longer time to take in that same amount of information. So what I'm gonna do is, starting from here, I'm gonna go straight towards Ellie and then I'm gonna like shoot past her. But again, the main thing that I'm gonna focus here is trying to keep her in the middle of my frame because that's where there's gonna be the least amount of movement and we can keep her without too much motion blur on her body, which is kind of the goal whenever we're doing this. So let's try like this and we're gonna come straight towards her and straight past in a way. Super cool, and I'll come this way towards you as well and do another one. And let's do one more. So cool. One of my favorite ways that I like to do this if I want to show like a lot of movement in my frame. Say if you're skating or something like that, this is one that you'll probably see commonly used for photos as well. And I want to use a longer lens for this one. You can do it with a wide lens like the one that we've been on, which is the 20mm f1.8. I want to try with a longer lens because I have a cool idea for this shot in particular. The thing I'm going to do here, and a scenario that I love to do this, is like I mentioned, to show movement or if you want to make something look like it's going really fast. And what I really want to do here is, it's not as important to keep Ellie in the center of the frame. I'm actually going to keep her on the back third to give her some nose room. But the important part is that I keep her in the same part of the frame and I'm going to do my best to match the speed of the camera moving like this with Ellie walking. I made sure to put this foreground into my frame just to further sell the effect. And having a longer lens is gonna help you sell the effect as well. If you're on a wider lens, you're gonna to have to move a lot faster for your frame to change as much as it would be changing if you were zoomed in. If you guys wanna learn like a whole bunch more about filmmaking, I have an entire filmmaking course and it's on a limited discount right now. So if you wanna find out like in detail how you guys can go from beginner to pro videographers, check it out, it's in the description. We're gonna do a super creative one. I basically want to try and move to and away from Ellie, but I'm going to add like a barrel roll into the camera. And it, it can be like quite extra, but I think if you use this like in conjunction with a bunch of regular shots, it's going to actually end up looking really cool because that whole background is going to be spinning around creating this like vortex thing. There's also definitely an opportunity here for a cool transition if you like vortex into one and then like vortex out of another one get creative let's see how it looks so when we actually do it I'm gonna do my best to keep Ellie in the center of the frame and for this one I'm gonna stay on 1 over 15 it's gonna kind of be like a bit of a play around moving around like this yeah and you can see as long as I'm keeping Ellie's face somewhat in the center of my frame it generally keeps her like kind of not too much motion blur and I know I'm getting like super crazy with this right now but I think it looks pretty sick. And if you like threw that in somewhere with like some cool transition or next to a few other 
more regular, less like crazy shots, I think it would look really, really cool. That's gonna be it. I hope you guys thought that this was cool. Just remember to get creative with it. Play around with your actual shutter speed. Somewhere between one over 10 and one over 20 is generally the sweet spot for me. But mess around with it and see what you guys can come up with. One of the funnest things about this is that you can just get super creative with it and figure out what movements really look cool and what like don't really work. So play around with it, mess around and get creative with the shots that you guys want to do. Other than that, have fun. Bye.